All right, so my name is Owen, and uh, I'm about to tell a story. Um, and uh, first of all, I just want you guys to know that, you know, I'm in recovery, and um, it's none of my business what anybody thinks about me, but I'm sharing this story today, so hopefully it can reach somebody who's still struggling. Um, back in 2012, I, um, my cousin had this house, um, in, on 6th Avenue H in, uh, in, in Lake Worth, Florida. And uh, I was homeless at the time in Lake Worth. And I went and knocked on the doors. I knew nobody was there and they had, you know, the windows were boarded up and um, I uh, took all the boards off the windows and uh, I moved into this thing and took it over. And uh, I moved my friends in, my homeless friends and we, uh, moved some prostitutes in and um, I had a couple drug dealers living there in the house with me and uh, it was your normal trap house um, no electricity no water um, I hooked up the water illegally with a garden hose running into a a, a pipe um, through the ground and uh, I had the electric hooked up illegally also um, so I'm gonna get in depth with the story real quick um so this one day, the girls, the two prostitutes that were living in the house were out front and um, they were tricking and a uh, Dodge Charger pulled up and uh, the guys were not interested in the girls and uh, they were wanting to buy some crack cocaine. And uh, so the girls came up the driveway and said, look, that guy in the car wants to buy some crack. Now, me and my homeboy, Truth, were living, we're sitting on the porch, and uh, Truth said, he said, bro, them guys are pigs, bro. He said, they're cops. He said, uh, you don't fuck with them. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, against my better judgment, because I was addicted physically to heroin at the time, and cocaine crack, and uh, I said, well, let me check it out. So I get in the car with these guys. I'm in the back seat. And uh, that I said, look, I said, y'all boys don't smoke no crack. I said, let's be real. I said, y'all boys don't smoke no crack cocaine. And they said, no, it's, we don't smoke. They said, uh, actually, it's for this prostitute we have back at the hotel room we're staying at. And I said, OK, that makes a little sense. And uh, so. I didn't have the crack on me, but I was willing to go get it for him. And we drove up to 12th Avenue, which was six blocks uh, south of where we were at. And uh, they gave me $20. What they didn't know is I already had a $20 bill in my pocket. I needed that other $20 um, so I could buy some heroin. <clears throat> and because uh, it, it cost me at least 40 to get my guy to come out. And uh, so we're driving in the car. And, they pull up to 12th Avenue and I get out of the car and uh, I would start walking. I get the $20 from the guy and I start walking up the road and I um, buy the $20. Well, actually, I bought him a dime. And uh, I came back and I told him, I said, uh, I said, look, I said, I couldn't get any crack cocaine for you guys. Meanwhile, I had the, the, the rock cuffed in my hand um, and I got in the back seat of the car. And I probably knew there was some audio and video in the car if they were police. But I wasn't sure. But I wanted to, if it was, I wanted to, to uh, have a chance in court. So what I did was, I, uh, I asked the guys on, if there was audio and video in the car, I, I said, guys, hey, listen. I said, so tell me more about this prostitute. I said, was she riding in the back of this car? And they said, yeah. And I said, well, was she smoking crack back here? And they said, yeah, matter of fact, she was. And I said, really? I said, well, that explains this 20 hot rock that's up underneath the seat. And I reach up underneath the seat and I grab it. And I, and I said, look, you guys wouldn't have found that without me. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep this money even though I, I didn't cop anything up the road. I said, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this, I need it. And I hand them the 20 hot rock. So right there, they don't have any case on me. Basically, if we go to court, if they are our cops, because they're admitting that this girl was smoked crack and for all I know, the audio and video is only picking up this part of my face and probably just what I'm saying on, on, in the car. And uh, 
So <clears throat> we, uh, they dropped me back off at the house and uh, I don't think they really have a case if they are cops. So a week later, same two Puerto Rican guys. <laughs> I don't know what it is with Puerto Ricans and me, but uh, anyway, two same two Puerto Rican cops. Um, this time it was just one of them and they were in a pickup truck and they had a, a, a garden rake in the back and the guy had concrete all over him and looked like he just got off work. And uh, this time I walk up to the, to, the, to the cab of the truck and I'm like, yo, I'm like, you, you guys again? And he's like, no, it's just me this time. He's like, yo, I got that same girl back at the motel and she needs some, some hard. And I already had some, um, I had it in my gums. And uh, so without thinking, I spit the rock out and uh, I'm like, all right, here. So I sold him a dime for 20 and I pocketed 20. And so another couple of weeks goes by and uh, Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office shows up at the trap house and I'm sitting on the porch again and they're like, oh, and uh, we got an indictment. We got a, we got a um, warrant for your arrest for two sales of crack cocaine. And uh, they also got my buddy Truth and my other buddy Bo and uh, arrested a couple of the girls that were living in the house for sales too. So we all went down. They took the whole house down. And they were real nice about it. They didn't jump in and raid us or anything like that. Um, they just knocked on, you know, came up there and I had to open the door and I said, look, bro, I said, everybody's gotta get out of here. We're all under arrest. And so we went to jail and I'm going in for first appearance and I'm dope sick and uh, the guy that's sitting in the, in the holding cell while we're waiting to get in, to see the court, he's in there for trafficking heroin. I'm in there for two sales of crack cocaine to a police officer and uh, he says, uh, I was like, you go first. I want to see what kind of bond you're going to get. Because I want to get the fuck out. I want to get out of jail, bro. I said, I want to see what, what that judge says to you. This is his third trafficking heroin charge. He gets in front of the judge and the judge says, um, I'm going to go ahead and grant you an OR bond and release you uh, today. And I was like, oh, man, I'm going home. You know, that's it. I'm, go I'm gone. So they put me up in front of the, the judge and the judge says, Mr. Culpepper, he says, you got a uh, hell of a history here. He says, um, this will be your, you're going up against, you know, for your third and fourth felony. He's like, we're going to go ahead and uh, OR you. He said, we'll see you in court next month. I said, yes, sir. Absolutely. So I left the jail and, uh, you know, I went back to the streets. I didn't want to go back to the house because I knew they could find me. I wasn't going to court. There's no way I'm going to court. <clears throat> and uh, I'm still strung out real bad. And, I'm sharing needles with guys on the streets and um, I contracted hepatitis B. And if anybody knows anything about hepatitis B, it's a real, uh, it's a real killer. It's, uh, it can kill you uh, within, you know, just a month or two. Um, totally different than hepatitis C. <clears throat> so, uh, this was two years later I've been running on these charges and um, I'm walking through John Prince Park down in Lake Worth, Florida. And I'm starting to get some real bad abdominal pain. And uh, I'm doubled over and I go to urinate and my urine is this thick black chocolate um, looking stuff, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. And my skin's just really yellow. Um, I'm not feeling really good. And, and I pick up the phone and I call 911. And um, I call the, 911, I said, look, I said, uh, I need some EMTs out here. I said, I'm, I'm dying, I don't know what's wrong with me. At the time, I didn't know I had hepatitis B. I had no idea what I had. And uh, so the police officers showed up. They asked my name over the phone. I said, Owen Culpepper. And uh, they showed up and they're like, look, Mr. Culpepper, they said, you're going to, you're going to jail. We got an outstanding warrant um, for felony sales of crack cocaine to a police officer. And I said, oh. I said, I figured that, man. I said, but before you take me to jail, I said, I really need to go to the hospital. And he, he was like, bro, there's no chance. You know, you're not going to the hospital. I was like, bro, look where I just urinated. And then there was a black uh, puddle there on the sidewalk. And uh, he was like, wow. He's like, okay. He's like, I get it now. He's like, all right, you're going to the hospital. So I get to the hospital and the doctor evaluates me and he's like, bro, he's like, you're dying from hepatitis B. He's like, I don't even know how you're still walking right now. Um, and uh, so I piss in a jar for him. I show him, you know, what's going on. He's like, your liver is being attacked. He said, it's bad. And uh, 
He said, we're going to keep you here hospitalized. You're going to be handcuffed, I'm sure, the whole time. And so that's what happened. I, they admitted me, and I sat on this, uh, this bed for 45 days. I sat in this bed, handcuffed. Uh, every eight hours, the, the police would uh, change out shifts, and, and it was miserable. But the whole time, I was kept on uh, Dilaudid and morphine, which, you know, just barely kept it at ease. I, I wasn't high at all. I was just... You know, it, I was still sick. I was still suffering withdrawals. I was sweating. The bed sheets were sticking to my back real bad. Um, I was pasty, you know, and my skin was really jaundiced. And I don't know what I'm going to do because I'm, I'm facing some time when I go to... This is my, my actually my fourth felony. If, if, I had two sales, so I already got two prior felonies. One for... Uh, one was for... Uh, um, I don't remember exactly what they were for. I know I had... One when I was 20 years old, and then I caught another one uh, as in a, later on in life, and then I got these other two that are pending charges, felonies. So I'm looking at a little bit of time. Um, I got a friend of mine named Kenneth Raven. He knows this story very, very well. And uh, <clears throat> I'm calling him from the hospital. They're letting me make a couple calls, and I'm like, listen, I said, I got court on this. I'm going to first appearance. They're going to be releasing me out of this hospital real soon, and I'm going to have to go to first appearance. Um, on these charges, man, and uh, I've been running, and he's like, he's a retired lawyer, and he, you know, he knows a little bit about this criminal justice thing, and he's like, look, if they offer you five years, take it, and I'm like, no, I said, I'm not, I said, I'm going home, as soon as I get to court, and this is all over, I'm going home that day, and he's like, no, you're not, he's like, you need to just, this will be the best treatment for a drug addict like you is prison, and I'm like, I'm just not letting it sink in. So they pull me out of the hospital and I go into the courtroom and I'm in my blue scrubs and I'm handcuffed, belly chains and feet chains and I'm walking in the courtroom and we all sit down on the, on the back rows there in the, in the uh, downtown courthouse and uh, my lawyer makes his way to me as a court appointed lawyer and he pretty much says the same thing to me. He goes, you know, you're, uh, you're looking at at some time here, bud, he said, and there's not much of a case, he said, they got audio and video on you um, two different times when you sold um, this cocaine, and, and he said, you know, it seems like you tried to outsmart him the first time, but he said, that didn't matter, they, they got you um, dead to rights, you're, you're, you're done. And I said, listen, I said, do you know the facts of this case? And he's like, no, I don't. And I said, well, do you know anything about what I've been going through for the last month and a half? And he said, no, I don't. And I said, well, it's going to change the, the whole situation of this case. And uh, he said, how's that? And I said, well, I said, I've been handcuffed for 45 days and I've been in police custody. I said, making them responsible for my medical bills. And my medical bills have piled up to over $750,000. And, uh, you know, these taxpayers in this courtroom are responsible, basically, for my, my, uh, my medical expenses. And I said, do you know that I need a new liver when I go to prison? I said, that's going to cost probably about the same amount, maybe more, when I go to prison. I said, otherwise, they can just release this dope fiend of a drug addict and I'll probably be dead in a week. And um, he was like, man, he's like, you're on to something there. He's like, let me run that by the DA. So he goes over there to the DA, and my buddy in the courtroom, Ken, he's looking at me like, and we're doing hand gestures, and I'm like, he's like, you're crazy. He's like, you're pushing it. He's like, you, you're gonna get more time. And I'm like, I'm going home today. And he's, he's just saying, he's, he ain't believing it. And uh, so the, he comes, the judge, the lawyer comes back to me, he goes, he may say, man, he said, you should be a lawyer. He said, uh, they're offering you 90 days. I said, no, man. I said, I'm not taking 90 days. I said, you didn't hear me very well. I said, I'm going home today, bud. And uh, he said, I don't know, man. He's like, look, I said, you know and I know all they want is a guilty plea. And that's all they want. The, that DA, that's all he wants. I'm not, there's no victim in my case. I didn't hurt anybody. You know, I was just a drug addict trying to make a little money. And uh, he said, all right, man. He said, I'm going to go try again. And he went back there and he said, Man, he said, you should definitely be a lawyer. He said, they're going to give you time serving and you're going to go home today. I said, all right. So uh, I walked out of the courtroom 
facing a number of years in prison. Um, I walked out of the courtroom that day, man. That was a pretty, I get goosebumps when I tell that story, man, because I still actually be locked up to this day if they, you know, gave me uh, what they wanted to give me. <laughs>